Yes, religion. Love it or hate it, embrace it or shun it, but it's had a massive impact on our history and our society. Those impacts haven't always been good, and with religion follows the development and obsession with the occult. Crowley, Asahara, Jones and Applewhite, all leaders of wacky religious cults with a variety of strange beliefs that over time became infamous throughout the world, especially with the birth of the internet. But with the popularisation of mass media and the internet, a new cult would be born. One that is very different from other cults you've seen in the past. It's definitely a strange one, but it's not as extreme as other cults. No, you won't see mass suicide, upside down crosses, human sacrifice or sex rituals. Well, maybe that last one, but instead you will see a concentrated Slavic obsession with an anthropomorphic animal cartoon character from the 1980s children's cartoon show Chippendale Rescue Rangers. The religion of Gadget Hackwrench. Gadgetology. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get started, we have a new sponsor. Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering you a box of awesome, top shelf goods from under the radar brands and 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are located in the US. It is free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Every month they introduce members to cool new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing and even more, even Live oysters sometimes, because sure, why not? Uh, based on the preference quiz that you fill out. You can also preview your box before it's shipped. You will get a box of awesome assigned to you and before it's shipped, you will get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you would like to keep it, swap it for a different box or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. Examples of boxes include The Weekender, a top-of-the-line durable cotton canvas carry-all that comes in a selection of colours. It has a metal reinforced frame for stability and thick leather handles for grip and comfort. The carry-all also has a removable nylon webbing shoulder strap and an interior pocket which will carry a slim 15-inch or a chunkier 13-inch laptop. Dram is the ultimate collection for anyone that is into whiskey and this box includes two Mixology Charm glasses made from durable high shine Sonics lead free crystal glass from Italy by Luigi Bormioli. Two jumbo ice ball moulds that each make 2.5 inch ice spheres, an old fashioned mixer made in the USA that serves 16 cocktails over ice, and a hardcover field guide to whiskey by Hans Offringer, which will help to translate the jargon used by the whiskey connoisseurs. To lay a foundation of expert knowledge from how to differentiate between the various types of whiskey, to proper storage, to the do's and don'ts of pairing, and much more. These are just two of the great boxes that can be found on the Bespoke Post website and every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside but costs you only a fraction of the value. So thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. To get 20% off of your first box of awesome, click the link in the description down below and enter Dankula20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash Dankula20. New sponsor. Show them some love. Click the link. So I'm sure we are all well aware that groups of individuals can obsess over the most absurd things, especially when it comes to animals. But this group of Russians are pretty obscure when it comes to their obsessions, to the point where they are a religious cult. I will make one disclaimer before I get too deep into things. This topic, as I mentioned, is rather obscure along with being Russian in origin. Meaning, it may lead to a lot of speculation since these guys are 
not the most well-documented cult, and a lot of the information about them is hidden in deep, dark, and obscure parts of the internet. Also, Google Translate isn't always correct, so some information might be misinterpreted. So, take all the things I say in this video with a pinch of salt. Depending on how old you are, you might not remember Chippendale Rescue Rangers, which ran for a total of three seasons between 1989 to 1990. I actually do remember it, and I did actually watch it as a child, but I was much more into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers. Even though it was cancelled, I'm sure there was a steady fandom of the series throughout the world. But in this case, for some reason, Chippendale Rescue Rangers was particularly popular in Russia. Apparently originating in the city of Nizhny Novgorod, which is to the east of Moscow, a group of enthusiastic Chippendale fans would collude to form Gadgetology, also known as Gaikoslavy. Now, there are two ways you can look at this. You could have the immediate thought of, right, I know a shitpost when I see one, or... Holy fuck, these guys actually believe this shit. And I will be honest, it's very hard to tell what line this group actually falls under, because I'm sure that some of them probably did have a passion for the show and they just thought it would be funny to start a cult or what some people would deem as a parody religion, like Flying Spaghetti Monster or Dudism. But from what we've seen, it appears to be something that has ran away with itself, in that it seems this was in fact started as a joke, but then some people joined and started taking it a little bit too seriously. I'm also sure that there were some people that were just taking the joke a little bit too far, and there were also some people that went a little bit... Chris Chan on the situation. Autism's a powerful thing. Now, generally, it seems that the cult was formed around the early 2010s, although apparently it might have also been started around 2009. Again, some information may be lost due to miscommunication or mistranslation. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this group was formed. Presumably via various Russian forums and message boards at the time, which eventually prompted them all to meet up together in Nizhny Novgorod. So, that begs the question, what is the focus of this cult, and what do they do exactly? Well, for starters, I'm sure they're all pretty big fans of the show itself, but the main character that they are obsessed with is the femoid mouse by the name of Gadget Hackwrench, praise be upon her, which is where the cult gets its name from. So, why are these Slavs so obsessed with Gadget? Well, it's hard to tell why they worship her as their goddess, but there is two rough ideas that I could maybe pinpoint, although this is spitballing. There is the nostalgic and comforting idea of Gadget, as apparently she embodies the ideal woman for Russians of that generation. Quirky, optimistic, technical capabilities beyond the average woman, and of course, cute, I mean... Okay, if you're into that type of shit. Think of her as the furry Ellen Ripley to the Russians. Which does bring us to the furry question. Now, again, I'm not entirely sure if they are furries. But from what I've seen, it seems that they are just obsessed with the character Gadget and not anthropomorphic mice as a whole. So, the other sets of interests that these followers may have is that they see Gadget as a form of purity, the light to the dark times, the cheese to their chalk. You know, seeing her as the perfect embodiment of a goddess, bringing divine optimism to their probably rather dull lives in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And I am very sure that she does bring them all joy as they apparently have regular meetups on Gadget's birthday, which is considered one of the most holiest of days, and they perform a variety of acts, like offering her gifts in a ceremonial ritual, marching around with tiki torches, singing songs, dancing, and even more. Oh, and of course, they always make sure to spread the good news <laughs> by uh, putting flyers everywhere in their local area. 
So the general concept of this religion is the manifestation of something that is fictional to make it become reality, which I'm sure you've all heard about before in movies and so on, and it's very, very popular in the occult. This is more commonly known as egregore, an ancient concept of bringing the non-physical world into the physical world. And egregore is something that you should all Google right now and read up on and learn everything you can about it, because once you do, you'll start seeing it everywhere. This brings us to the general beliefs of gadgetology, and of course, with every religion, there are various paths. I'm sure there are a lot more, but generally, this is split up into three main areas. Firstly, you have your trad waifu gadgetologists who perform basic spiritual communion for gadget, along with performing righteous acts, which are the basis of a, quote, Gaikoslav life. <laughs> He's Boris. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> of course, with traditionalists, there are also progressives. Unfortunately. Who focus a lot more on self-improvement along with the purity of their day-to-day -day life. Not just their time spent in church. This direction of gadgetology is to lead your life by example of the other characters in the show by helping others, fighting evil with all of your strength, and becoming as morally close to the other characters as you can, or as the cult calls them, the rescuers. Basically, this branch wants you to be like the rescuers. Lastly, there is apocalyptic gadgetology, because look, you're just, you're just not a weird cult if you don't have a doomsday prophecy. This basically follows the same Christian belief of rapture and the four horsemen and all of that jazz, focusing on the salvation of your soul. Oh, and I'm pretty sure that instead of Jesus coming back, it would be Gadget herself, etc, etc, you, you get the idea. Along with the main divisions of gadgetology, there are also some general teachings. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the teachings because it's on par with the Bible in terms of length, but I'll give you a few examples. There is the very first teaching, which is the second coming of Gadget Hackwrench, described as the most archaic of all teachings. This doesn't mean that Gadget will physically manifest herself on Earth. What they actually mean by the second coming is they want Chippendale Rescue Rangers to be uncancelled and relaunched on TV. Although, apparently this teaching was redacted due to there being a lot more content of Rescue Rangers outside of the series, along with people in the modern world just really not watching regular TV as much. Funnily enough, they also teach a doctrine of good and evil and their opposition. Just think of it as heaven and hell, but a lot more cartoony. I will admit that a lot of these teachings are just basically rehashed Christian beliefs, but hey... Most religions copy something. The few teachings that are strictly gadget orientated, however, are quite funny. <laughs> For example, there is the teaching of the fan art, which states that grace can be met not just by prayer, but also by creating beautiful types of art to get in touch with the divine goddess Gadget Hackwrench. There's Art of Me online. There's, there's rule 34 of me online. And there is nothing divine about any of it. Another teaching is the teaching of Gadget's death. Basically, if you don't pray to and worship Gadget, she will end up being forgotten, which is another form of death. It's like that quote. They say you die twice. Once when you stop breathing, and a second time a bit later on, when somebody says your name for the last time. Which is actually a quote from Banksy, from back when he was actually against the machine instead of just being another propaganda cog in it. But anyway, what could actually be worse than Gadget dying? Well, let's get on to that. I'm sure some of you may have heard about the new Chippendale movie, which was okay, but the 
coming of a new movie may have seemed like some good news for the gadgetologists. Holy shit, we are finally getting some new content of Gadget Hack Wrench for the first time in decades. They were absolutely hyped about it. Until, <laughs> until one particular scene in the movie. To catch some of you up in the original Chippendale series, there's two main characters, Chip and Dale of whom Gadget Hackwrench was basically the love interest. You would think, yeah, okay, in the canon, probably one of those two would settle down with Gadget. But canonically, in the new movie, they wrote that instead of Gadget being with Chip or Dale, another side character was chosen instead. A literal fucking fly <laughs> called Zipper. Basically. Basically, this was the biggest black pill to the Russians since Viktor Soy died. There are a variety of images I can use to sum this up, but I think this does the best just... <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny. Maybe, maybe that doesn't quite capture the sheer rage of the gadgetologists, but perhaps this post does. He fucked her. <laughs> He infected her womb with his shit-orbiting, hand-rubbing insect seed. And you know what? She loved it. She begged for more. He literally made her a breeding factory. This is the face of the man who won it all. It's like, even in the movie, they've got, like, 300, like, fly babies and shit. Oh, it was so stupid, but Jesus, Jesus Christ, did it make people angry. Some of the posts were obvious shit posts, you know, where people just fake some rage to drum up the memory about the whole debacle, but a lot of anons on some message boards did actually seem very pissed off about this revelation, and a lot of the gadgetology followers were furious as well. Like, I'm not a big fan of the show myself, but it does seem rather weird that they put that in the film. Like, they were actively trying to fuck with the gadgetologists. But the problem, since gadgetology is mostly a parody in itself, is you can't tell if these rage posts are actually real or just people playing the part. The cult themselves do have an official website, which looks like it hasn't changed since the early 2000s, which, when I had a look, it still seems to be active. Most of the pages are broken, and only half of it is translated, so you'll need to translate the rest for yourselves, if you would like to follow the gracious words of our saviour goddess, Gadget Hackwrench, praise be upon her. This has been a pretty weird cult, as far as cults go, but honestly, they don't seem that bad overall. Yeah, you could call them cringe or whatever, but what they do is pretty tame. It seems that they mostly keep to themselves and spread the word of gadgetology when they can, while still having fun. But of course, you would think that it all went downhill for them after their goddess got flied. As for the cult itself, I think it's safe to say that it's about 90-95% ironic. Right, it's a shitpost. It's a joke. People started this religion and go along with it, obviously, for a meme. They did it for a laugh. Even the little ceremonies that they put on is clearly just a bunch of kids having a LARP and taking the piss. The ceremonies seem to be just used as a big joke of an excuse to all meet up, get drunk and party together. However, whenever you get such groups, you always get people who join them and take things a little bit too seriously. And when you get in such a situation, it gets very hard to tell who is joking and who isn't. But, that's part of the fun. It's Count Dankula on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!